We are gathered here to fill you with fear and give you a treat for your ears as we invade your mind with our scary rhymes and some tales that can be gory. As you bear witness and sit here and listen to our poetic horror stories. I witnessed my neighbor murder his wife. He came up behind her, and he slit her throat with a knife. And no, I'm not a peeping Tom. No, that's not it at all. You see, me and his wife was having an affair, and I was hiding in the closet when he came in. Her husband was always on the road. He was never at home. You see, I'm her neighbor. I live next door, and she was lonely. We became fast friends, and we had a good rapport. But our friendship started to change. We grew closer. Our bond became really strong. She was going to leave him to be with me. We were planning to start a family. I know this was wrong, because she was married, and to me she didn't belong. But now, he took her away. She is no more. Now my beloved is laying here dead on the floor as I watch from my hiding space in the closet through the crack in the door. I can see him pacing back and forth. Then he grabs her cell phone. He sent a text message and the message came to me, to my cell phone. Fortunately, when the message came through, my phone was on silent. Imagine if it wasn't then he would have continued his violence. I read the message he sent from his wife's cell phone to me. It read, Please come over right away. I need your help. My husband knows about us. I'm scared. I don't know what he's going to do to me. This is a real emergency. He was trying to lure me to come over. He was trying to set me up. This was just too much. This guy is a real psychopath. A piece of work. He's a fucking jerk. I heard him say to himself, You want to take my wife? Then in return, I'll ruin your whole life. When you come by and check on my wife, I will make it look like you two got in a fight. And in a crime of passion, you killed her with a knife. Since she no longer wants to be with me, at least I'll be able to collect from the life insurance policy. <laughs> He left the door slightly open a crack, to bait me into his trap. He quickly turned. He started looking around for a place to hide. A big enough space he can watch from the side. He started heading my way. He wanted to hide in the closet to wait. I thought to myself, he's going to open this door and discover me hiding here. This was a complete nightmare. I know what he will do when he finds me inside. I need to be prepared to fight for my life. To tell you the truth, I'm a lover. I'm not a fighter. My heart is pumping and my adrenaline is flowing with every step as he gets closer. And once he reaches out for the closet door, suddenly I heard another voice. It was the police saying, freeze, get down on the floor. He was caught with his wife's body laying in a pool of her own blood. My love. After I witnessed him kill his wife, I messaged 911 for help. I texted the whole situation to the police and quickly gave them the address. I also caught him on video after he took her out. I caught him on video admitting to the crime and his plan to implicate me. So they had no doubt. When I emerged from the closet, he knew he was in big trouble. But I could tell he knew it was over. They let him out in handcuffs. This whole ordeal is nuts. I wish this never had to happen at all. This deadly assault. Because he took away the love of my life. And now, I'm left behind with a broken heart. Hello. I don't know where I should begin. But I'm a 911 operator. And I've been working there for... 11 years. I will not tell you my name. I need to keep my anonymity. 
because I'm still working for 911. And this way, it keeps my job safe. But I need to tell these stories to someone, or I think I will lose my mind. These stories will be hard to believe in here, but they are true. All these stories I will share over time. And believe me, I have many stories of murder and crime. But the stories I will share with you are strange and bizarre. And tonight, I'm only sharing the one. If you are interested in more, maybe I'll do a second post? But this is all I have for now. My first story I call... Little Girl Lost. Nine one one, what's your emergency? Hello, I'm lost and I can't find my mommy. I've looked for her everywhere, but she's not here. Can you help me find my mommy? Okay, how old are you, sweetie? I'm three. Okay, I will help you find your mommy. Tell me, what's your name? She started to explain. Okay, April. That's a pretty name. April, where are you? Are you at home? Are you alone? I don't know. It's dark here, and I'm cold. The last time I saw my mommy was last night when she took me into bed. But I woke up when I heard a loud bang, and I saw red. April, what do you mean you saw red? I saw red, and it was all over my bed. After that, I felt a pain in my head. I went back to sleep, and when I woke up again, I was alone in the dark, and no longer in my bed. So I just started to walk. As I walked, I saw a phone, and my mommy told me if I needed help to call 911. Now, this doesn't make any sense to me, but I calmed her down and told her to take a deep breath and just breathe. I'm scared. I can hear voices saying my name. Whispering April, come this way. But I can't see anyone around. I only hear sounds. Okay, April, listen to me. I'm going to do everything to keep you safe. You promise? Yes, sweetie, I promise. But I knew, really, this was impossible if I'm being honest. Suddenly, I heard an ear-piercing scream. That memory makes me upset every time I remember it. April, are you okay? Tell me what's going on. But all I could hear was crying at the end of the phone. April? Baby, talk to me. Please. I heard a small voice finally. This placed my mind at ease. <laughs> I'm here. I'm sorry, but I got really scared. I saw faces in the dark moving about around me. I really want my mommy to make the monsters go away. Where is she? I know you do. But unfortunately, this is a complex situation. I'm doing my best to find your location. This was concerning, because all I could hear on her end was moaning, groaning in whispers. Everything in the dark that would scare a child. I felt bad and wanted to break down and cry. But I couldn't do that. I needed to be strong for her, to keep her calm. I made a promise to keep her safe. I gave her my word. Look, I wasn't sure what was going on, if this was a prank or for real, but my intuition was telling me to tell her to pray, to make the bad things in the dark go away. April, listen to me. We're going to make all the bad monsters leave. Okay. I want you to close your eyes and think of a happy memory, somewhere you feel safe and secure. Can you do that for me, sweetie? Yes. Now see yourself surrounded by white light. Warm, loving, and bright. Can you see? 
Yes. Okay, you want me to use my imagination? Yes, I can see. I'm in my happy place, where nothing can harm me. I'm safe. Yes, now repeat after me. Bad things go far away. I'm protected in the light. Here, I'm safe. I want you to repeat this until all the scary sounds and the things in the dark go away. Bad things go far away. I'm protected in the light. Here I'm safe. As she repeated this over and over again, I heard less of the moaning, groaning, and whispering. It's working. The bad things are gone. And now I can see my mom. She is in the light. She's calling out to me. Thank you for helping me. You kept your promise. I have found my mommy. And just like that, she was gone. She was no longer on the phone. I'm not a religious person at all, but this felt spiritual. I hope April and her mommy are happy wherever they went. And I'm glad I got to keep my promise. Until my next post, I'll keep you updated. Thank you for listening. a small spot of black mole in the closet in my home. I made a cocktail of water and bleach. I sprayed the spot and waited a few minutes to see. And it worked. The spot faded away with my homemade spray. A week later, the mole came back. But it was a much bigger spot. It looks really bad. So I sprayed it again with my homemade mixture of water and bleach. I also added vinegar, hoping it might make the concoction stronger. And again, it went away with my homemade spray. But the next week, it was back again. Worse than ever. And now my full wall was now completely covered. My home was slowly being taken over. Black mold. It was taking control. My home was fumigated and was closed for contamination. I had to move out of my house for a whole week. Till the mold was gone. Till it was complete. I moved back into my home. It was mold free. There was no mold to be found. I was very happy. The wall showed no sign of black mold. None at all. And it never returned back to my wall again. No more mold, 100%. A month now passed and still no more mold on the wall. I was no longer worried about it at all. So, one day I noticed a black spot on my leg. It was small, just a speck. A week later, I stepped out of the shower. I noticed it had grown a bit bigger. It was really black and hairy. It looked scary. I made an appointment with my dermatologist to check the black spot. To make sure it's not anything serious, I need the doctor to check me out. A Couple of days later, I received my results. Everything checked out to be okay. She found nothing wrong, but the black spot continued to grow. By the end of the week, my whole leg was covered. Then it spread to the other. I started to panic. I was looking like a hairy beast. It started to cover my whole body. I went to the emergency room. They admitted me quickly and into an infectious disease room. I had to be quarantined away from everyone. The doctors had to visit me in hazmat suits. It wasn't fun. I was poked and prodded and had every test under the sun. But every test came back clear. Every last one. They ran one last test and it came back positive for black mold. The doctors and nurses were shocked. This has never happened before. They had to treat me like they did my walls to get rid of the mold. Slowly with treatment it went away but I was hospitalized for days. This was a very scary experience and one I don't want to have ever happen again. I'm a detective. 
I'm investigating a rash of murders in my town. A vigilante is taking it upon himself to take suspects down. But I have to admit, this case has me dumbfounded. Every crime scene I go to, footprints are the only clues. Look, I'm a very experienced detective, and I've been solving murder cases for years. And I will solve this case. Right hand on the Bible, I swear. But this case does keep me awake at night. It's my obsession. It's my vice. The attacker only attacks suspects who are accused of murder, but they got off on a technicality. When it is obvious they did it and should be behind bars. But instead, they are out roaming around scot-free. I don't blame the attacker for taking justice into his own hands. I know it's wrong, but a part of me does understand. If I had it my way, they wouldn't have to worry about jail, because I would condemn them all straight to hell. These corrupt leaders, politicians, judges, and even our mayor. I hope this has them all scared. But my feelings aside, I have a job to do. It doesn't matter about my personal views. I can tell you one thing. The attacker is very cunning, smart, and always a few steps ahead. Like he has insight. He's like a ghost or a phantom moving in the night. It's really creepy and bizarre. Making the situation hard to solve. But I have a theory that the attacker is a detective just like me too. And this is what's making him hard to pursue. He seems to know what I know, and this is why I'm always a step behind. It's like he can read my mind. But I have a plan to set a trap for him. A trap he won't be able to resist. I'm baiting him to come to me, with a suspect he won't dismiss. This is just a friendly reminder to please like and comment to let us know how we are doing so far. We would love to hear from you all. And if you're new, please subscribe and become a part of the PHS crew. And we thank you. There's a corrupt judge that killed his wife. And he got away with his crime, because they can't find the murder weapon. They misplaced the knife. <laughs> Without the evidence, the jury let him go free. His motive for killing his wife was that she wanted a divorce. She was going to take the kids, half of his property, and money. She hired me to investigate to see if he was cheating. I discovered he was. He was sleeping with his assistant. Lying to his wife that he had late night meetings. He's the scum of the earth. He's the worst of the worst. And this makes him the perfect candidate for my trap. He is for sure a suspect the attacker will try to attack. I waited one night outside of the judge's home. I chose a night when I knew he was there all alone. It was after midnight and nothing had happened so far. There was nothing to report. But I started to get tired and could feel my eyes getting weak. I don't remember doing this, but I think I fell asleep. When I woke up, I was standing in the judge's home, standing over his bed with a bloody knife in my hand. I don't know how I got there and how I got in. I have no memory at all. I don't know what happened. I didn't know what to make of it. It was hard for me to comprehend, to imagine. All I remember was waiting in my car and I must have fallen asleep. But this still doesn't make any sense to me. I started to panic because I could hear the police. I knew I needed to leave or they would accuse me. I ran out so fast, but I noticed in my haste, I left footprints in his blood. Footprints being the only clue in the room with the judge. I was able to escape. My heart was beating out of my chest. I was so afraid. 
I can't believe this. I solved the case. And all this time, the answer was staring me right in my face. This is why I couldn't catch the attacker. No, this can't be. Because this whole time, the attacker was me. This is based on a true story that Renee writes, the author, took impression from. If you would like to read the actual story, there'll be a link in the description box. Thank you. World War III took out a massive part of the population and our food sources. Everything is bad all around us. Nothing is left but destruction, disease, and corpses. There's only a small number of human beings who are still alive. We live deep underground. This is how we survived. We were able to find fresh water to drink, but there was very little food for us to eat. We finally have been able to search the surface due to the quality of the air. We send the young and the strongest out in pairs. It's been a very long time since we made a discovery like this. It's been very hit and miss. But we found an area that is green and lush with trees, fruits, and plants. And some weird little animals grazing in the grass. How did they get here? We didn't stop to ask. We should have. We were so hungry, and it all looked so good. But we should have known better. At least we should. It was a trap. A trap to find us. A way for the enemy to track. We took our safety for granted. But we needed food bad. We took everything in the area we could take back with us underground. We ate so good that night. With all the food we found. But that next day, our location was invaded. The enemy were crawling all over. We were raided. I know what this sounds like, but this is not an invasion from aliens from another planet. No. These are Earth-bound insects that have mutated from the nuclear blast from our nuclear war. They are now sentient, intelligent beings. And they are now our new overlords. Do you know your life is being produced for content? For entertainment? Well, it's true. You are part of a daily vlog. You, my friend, are a reality star. Somewhere out there, you are famous. I know this sounds crazy. But there's these entities called the producers. They are the ones that create your show as soon as you are born. They make up your storyline, create plot twists, and all other scenarios. Don't believe me? That's okay. But I have proof. You know the feeling? Deja vu? It's because a change was made and your scene was reproduced. Or when an object goes missing. When you swear you just saw it a moment ago. It's because the producers removed it. Took it out of the show. They need everything to have a certain type of flow. Because it's all about the views and the clicks. They need your show to be a hit. Which means your show will be cancelled. Taken off the air permanently. How do I know all about this? They made a grave mistake. When they left open a rip. It led me behind the scenes. Where I was able to see everything. These entities have TV screens. Cameras or lights for heads. And they were in my house, but it looked like a set. They were moving things about. They were setting the scene for the next shot. It was a sight to see. Because everyone was in suspended animation. And really, it was a bit peaceful and serene. But that's when they noticed I wasn't anywhere to be found to set up my scene. That's when they saw the rip. And they knew I was somewhere hiding here. Suddenly... All I can recall is being back at my home. In the exact set scene from the producer's scenario. At first, 
I thought it was a bad dream, and I was just imagining these things. Until I got a visit from a producer once more. In my home. Which solidified it for me. They are real. It made more sense out of my ordeal. I woke up in the middle of the night to go to the restroom. And a producer was waiting on me. It was in my hall, just standing there in the dark. Looking menacing. All I could see was its TV screen. He turned the screen on and showed me clips from my show. And at the end, it turned the screen off. Turned around to go. Suddenly, it faced me once more as it opened a rip in our space-time fabric. It showed me my show rating was at 90%. I thought, wow, isn't that fantastic? You can believe me or not. That's okay. I'm just letting you know. Because you also have a producer of your very own. They are producing your life as a rom-com, action, drama, or a horror show. You have an audience watching you right now. Why don't you wave to your adoring fans and take a bow? Everything I see reminds me of you. I miss you so much and all the things we used to do. You were my lover, my best friend, my confidant. We watched out for one another. You never let me down or disappoint. We never argue, fuss, or fight. Me and you always thought alike. This is why we lasted so long, and without you, I don't know how I can go on. Believe me, this is tearing me up inside. Living without you, it's not right. But you will live on in my memories. This is something they can't take away from me. It's not fair. We were a perfect pair. Me the Bonnie to your Clyde. And just like them, we took many lives. And this is why they need to pay. They all need to die. I'm not going to be satisfied till they pay the ultimate price. I remember the first time when we met and how I felt when you caught my eye. I knew right then and there you were mine. And from that point on, we created chaos and mayhem everywhere we would go. It was so good. It was true love. It was beautiful. I would lure the men in with my beauty and sex appeal. I would bring them home. Where we would rob them and then you would slit their throats for the kill. So much blood. So much carnage. It was such a thrill. It gave me chills. And the way you would cut them up with precision. Like a surgeon performing surgery. You wielded that cleaver like a true master. It was a treat for my eyes to see. Those were good times. But now, they are in the past. Because I knew this wouldn't last. I knew that us and the law would eventually clash. But I thought we would leave this world together. And we would spend eternity bonded forever. I really loved you with all my heart. And now, I'm just lost. You are my better half. You completed me. There can never be another. And this is the reason I will make them suffer. That day they took you away from me is still fresh in my mind. When the police raided our home, shot you through the front door and took your life. Seeing you bleeding out with a big hole in your chest is a sight I will never forget. Me crying, holding you as you took your last breath. This is something they will live to regret. I don't care if it takes me over a hundred years. My mission is clear. I want revenge. Because they should have killed me too. Leaving me alive was the wrong move. Because I don't have anything to lose. 
by the grace of God, I was able to escape before they were able to arrest me and take me to jail. Now I'm on the run scheming and planning, but keeping them off my trail. I'm laying low for now, but when the time is right, I will strike. But until then, I'll reminisce of my memories of you. And when I'm done, I'll join you in hell soon. <laughs>